Islamic world. The Western media is delusional, thinking everyone shares Western values. They fantasize that with enough Western-style diplomacy, peace will magically happen. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video titled, I am Harris Ali leaves Ben Sapiro speechless with hard truth about Islam. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. The assumption is that Hamas must be some sort of rational actor. Iran must be a rational actor. They love their kids too. And they just want the same sorts of things that the Israelis want. So why do they have to have this cycle of, of violence? And if we just put enough pressure as the West on the Israelis to make concessions, eventually there will be a Palestinian state and that will solve all of the problems and everybody will just live happily ever after together. But you obviously grew up in the Islamic world and so you know something that Westerners don't, which is that people don't think the same way all across the world. They think very differently. Wait a minute, is the West really this naive, thinking everyone shares Western values? The freedom of every person to worship God in his own way, everywhere in the world. The West is living in a fantasy land when it comes to understanding the Islamic world. The Western media is delusional, thinking everyone shares Western values. They fantasize that with enough Western-style diplomacy, peace will magically happen. Give me a break. Wake up, people. Diplomacy isn't a magic wand. Growing up in the Islamic world, Ion faced rigid hierarchy and oppressive submission to Allah. This means absolute obedience to rulers and husbands, crushing dissent and freedom of thought. According to a 2019 World Economic Forum report, 18 of the 20 countries with the highest gender gap are Muslim majority. Did you hear that? 18 out of 20. You might as well try teaching a cat to bark. Let's dive into Ion's powerful insights. You know something that Westerners don't, which is that people don't think the same way all across the world. They think very differently. What was it like growing up in the Islamic world? Um, they're rational, but it's a different rationale. And it's, you know, you seem to a different team. So growing up as a Muslim, what it boils down to be a Muslim is to submit to the will of Allah. And what that entails, that's documented in scripture, it is the Holy Quran, it's the Hadith, the legacy that's left by the Prophet Muhammad, is the Sira, it's the biography of the Prophet Muhammad. And if you take that together along with 1400 years of culture and civilization, what you get is the Muslim majority countries that we have, and it is... Um, an idea of a hierarchy where, of course, you submit to Allah, but who represents Allah, who represents God on earth. So it's the ruler, and you have to agree to, with, to um, authoritarian rule without question because, you know, the Supreme Ayatollah says that he speaks for Allah, in other words, he puts himself in Allah's throne. And then uh, the wife obeys the husband without question. It's just different forms of subjugation and as a child uh, I wasn't allowed to ask questions. There's no freedom of conscience, there's no freedom of speech. Uh, when the Muslim Brotherhood as a teenager when they came to our neighborhoods, I think of that as a classic um, exercise in subversion because we identified as Muslims, all of us, my friends, my neighbors, all of us who are Muslim were identified as Muslims. But they brought a different flavor of Islam where they said the way you practice your faith is all wrong. They came steeped in um, radicalization from Saudi Arabia and from Egypt, the Muslim Brotherhood, some of them also came from Iran. And from one day to the next we were taught Instead of just believing, we had to practice. And to practice meant to do things, not just to say things. And one of the key components was to hate the unbeliever. Invite the unbeliever to Islam. And if they refuse, if he rejects that invitation, the call to dawah, then they are your enemy. So the concept of enemy was explained to us. And take it one level further, anti-Semitism, what we call it, I've never had anti-Semitism before, but it was 
He showed it as the Jew because the Jew was cracked off the land, cracked off the word of God, the Jew was evil. And so before I had even met any Jewish person uh, or knew of the existence of Jewish people as human beings, um, I was programmed to think of Jews as monsters, as a synonym for the devil. Welcome back. A Michigan man was recently arrested in Texas after allegedly threatening on social media to kill Jewish members of Michigan's government. Attorney General Dana Nessel says she was among those targeted. This comes after several anti-Semitic incidents have occurred across Metro Detroit over the past year and across the country as well. I've got a little anecdote here where, you know, just to tell you like how far reaching it was, when as children you curse, I think in the Western world you use the F word, you use the S word, that was discouraged, it was bad manners. So what was the right way to say, ouch? It was to say, Bhakti Ahut, curse you. It, it, it was that far reaching that it becomes really a part of you. And so when I look at what's going on today, this explosion of what looks like sudden anti Semitism, it's not so sudden. It's decades of indoctrination using the mosque, using the madrasa, using the neighborhood, and as technology advanced, I remember the days these things were spread with the cassette tape. You remember those cassette tapes? And now uh, we have AI. So every new technology is used by the Islamists to advance a utopia that's going to take us back to the 7th century. And on the way to that utopia, we are to be dedicated to destroying the state of Israel, the idea of Zionism, and Jews in general. And it is, to me, it's so important that every Muslim who grew up like I did and who has emancipated themselves from this doctrine of hatred should come forward today and speak about it and be honest about it and, and decry it and come forward and defend the state of Israel. Ayan's call to action is a stark wake-up call. She urges those who have escaped this doctrine of hatred to speak out, defend Israel, and expose the decades of indoctrination fueling today's anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism isn't some sudden trend. It's the result of long-term, systematic brainwashing. This isn't a case of suddenly everyone hates Jews. It's been bubbling under the surface for decades, like a bad reality TV show that just won't get cancelled. Why is it so hard for us to accept that anti-Semitism has deep roots? Why do we pretend it's a recent phenomenon when it's been festering for decades? Ignoring this is like trying to solve a termite problem by repainting the house. According to a UNICEF report from 2020, in many parts of the Islamic world, children as young as five are indoctrinated with extremist ideologies in schools and madrasas. Did you hear that? Five-year-olds are being brainwashed. This systematic brainwashing starts early and is deeply ingrained. The West needs to wake up. We must understand these cultural and ideological differences shaping global conflicts. Ayan's bravery in sharing her story and standing up for women's rights and human dignity is nothing short of heroic. We must support those who fight for freedom against oppressive regimes. Ask yourself, why is the West so blind to these harsh realities? Why do we refuse to see the truth about radical Islam? Maybe it's because acknowledging these truths would destroy our comfortable narratives around multiculturalism and moral equivalence. But we can't afford this ignorance any longer. It's time to open our eyes, face the brutal truths, and support those brave enough to speak out against oppression and hatred. Wake up, folks. The real world is calling, and it's not leaving a voicemail. And let's be clear, this isn't about hating anyone. It's about recognizing reality and taking a stand for freedom and human dignity. If you can't see that, you're part of the problem. Wake up, Western world, before it's too late.
Oh wow, what an interesting video. Just by the title, I am Harris Ali leaves Ben Shapiro speechless with hard truth about Islam. Wow. And I think this is a wake up call for the West because they always believe that everyone has that Western values. They feel what they believe is what everyone all over the world believes. But it's not true. And here is Ayan giving us her experience, how she was brainwashed right from when she was, uh, when she was a kid, how she was brainwashed. And I believe her experience that she's sharing is nothing short of heroic. Cause for her to be able to come forth and, you know, speak out based on what she experienced and based on the current reality, I believe she she really took a bold step it's not everyone sapiro is also listening to her and i believe the idea of islam radicalization where people have to be you know forced to believe something forced to obey something and forced to hate other people that they feel they are not islam i feel that is totally unacceptable that is totally wrong and here is I am in this video talking about anti-Semitism, anti the hatred of the Jews. Here is someone that you have not even met just because that person holds different views or share different views from what you believe in. And you decide to see the person as an enemy. Instead of trying to understand the person better, you just mark the person out as an enemy, which I believe that is totally wrong. And a lot of People are going through the same thing that Ayan is also going through. A lot of people are going through the same thing. Where you are meant to believe, you are meant to obey, you have no right to ask questions, you have no right to, oh, to even ask questions when you are not okay with something. So I believe the West have to be really alert about what Ayan is talking about. And I believe Ayan is speaking out not just for herself, but it's there to be able to uphold uh dignity and i believe everyone has the right to express how they feel to express how they feel if you are not okay with something you have the right to say oh i'm not okay with this this is how i want it to be if you are not okay with the way something is going on you should be able to speak out but living in a society or living in an environment or living in a country where you are meant to believe everything you hear without questioning anything, I believe that is totally wrong. That is totally unacceptable. And the West thinking everyone shares the same Western values. Because values. we know in the West, they promote freedom of speech, they promote freedom of, uh, they promote freedom of expression, freedom of uh, freedom to practice whichever religion you want, multiculturalism, but it's not like that everywhere. Thinking what you believe in, the values you believe in is same as the values. So believe, believe me, that is totally wrong. And I believe that is what Ayan is trying to educate us about in this video. I've learned a lot just listening to Ayan educate Ben Sapiro. I also love to hear your comments.